Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 17, 2020 Glendale City Council meeting. Due to evolving situation with COVID-19 and health recommendations from LA County Health Department, the Glendale City Council meeting will be available to the public electronically. Due to social distancing requirements, the public will not be able to attend the meeting. This meeting can be viewed on local cable charter and spectrum channel six and AT&T Uverse channel 99. You may also stream online through our website, www.glendalca.gov by scrolling all the way to the bottom of the web page and selecting live streaming, which is the third icon from the left. For public comments and questions during the meeting, call 818-937-8100 which is on the screen. See it here. Please don't call in advance of the agenda item. With this being said, may I have roll call, please? Councilmember Brotman? Here. Devine? Here. Kasakian? Here. Najarian? Here. Mayor Agajanian? Present. What's next, please? Next would be flag salute. Please join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God under with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Ajamia. Please remain standing for tonight's invocation. Let us pray. Tonight we gather in these chambers to conduct the city's business and deliberate on the issues affecting our residents. Help us have the productive discussions that will broaden our perspective. Help us to take the various ideas presented and think of ways to flesh them out. If we do disagree, let it be on the content and not personality conflicts. Help us to resolve any disputes gracefully, be creative problem solvers, and have great team spirit. Help us to find principles that we all can agree on and put these into action. Finally, we ask that you watch over and protect the first responders who keep our neighborhoods, businesses, and cities safe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Ajemian. What's next? The next item, please. The agenda for the November 17, 2020 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Tuesday, November 10th, 2020 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. What's next, please? Next would be presentations and appointments, the regular Housing Authority and City Council meeting for November 24th, 2020 have been canceled. The next regular meetings are scheduled for Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor? And yes, uh, Ms. Devine. Um, thank you. Speaking of uh, the Housing Authority, I'd like to uh, uh, entertain a motion to uh, adjourn today's Housing Authority meeting. May I move the item? There a second? Second. We are adjourned at 8 p.m. Thank you. I'm Thank sorry. You. Six, six Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Devine. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, what's next, please? Next would be consent items, including minutes. The following are routine and may be acted upon by one motion. Any member of council or, or audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such requests before motion is proposed. Thank um, you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Ms. Brock. Yeah. Mr. Brock. I, um, I would like to pull one item for uh, a brief discussion. Which item? Um, the item on uh, weed abatement. Um, I have to look at the number. F. F, 4F. 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 Yeah. Okay, 4F is pulled. For and the I'll balance. move the balance of the consent calendar. Okay, so a roll call, please. For the balance of the item. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Mrs. Devine, second. Council Member Brotman? Yes. Devine? Yes. Kasakian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Mayor Agajanian? Yes. Okay, item 4F, please. Public works regarding contract award for weed control services. One motion authorizing the interim city manager to execute a contract with the pest options 
uh, incorporate any amount of $122,400 annually for a period of three years, or $367,200 total for weed control services for the city of Glendale. Two, resolution appropriating $10,200. Thank you. Mr. Golania? Yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Member City Council. As the clerk read into record, this is this item is related to award of a contract for the city's weed control services. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Amrani, uh, Public Works Director, for a, a brief presentation on the item and open it up questions. Thank you, Mr. Amrani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, uh, council members. Uh, this was a, uh, a bid, basically, that we sent out for uh, soliciting um, proposals for our weed control services that we do throughout the city. This year's was not only for weed control uh, throughout this, uh, the city, but we also added the North San Fernando Road Corridor Landscape Maintenance District. Um, we had one bidder, basically, that submitted, and uh, we had requested an, a regular bid for this service as well as, al as, well as an alternate bid. The uh, regular bid was for the use of EPA approved chemicals uh, for treating the weeds and then the alternate bid was for uh, the uh, use of organic materials and mechanical maintenance. The alternate bid came at almost three times as much as the uh, regular bid so we are recommending the, the award to, uh, to uh, uh, the uh, contractor, the low bidder for the low or the base, uh, for the base bid basically, not the alternate bid in the amount of the $122,000. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. And, but we had only one bid? Yes, we had a lot of interest in it, but uh, we only received one bid, unfortunately. And that all the time bothers me, but however, Mr. Broughton. Uh, yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Imrani. And um, we already spoke about this, but I had some uh, questions uh, from the public, so I wanted to make sure everybody understood. So. Firstly, um, can you just confirm that uh, this vendor will not be using Roundup anywhere in Glendale? And in fact, um, we don't we don't use Roundup uh, anywhere else through our any any direct weed abatement we do with Public Works or with or with the Parks Department. Is that correct, uh, Councilmember Brotman? That is correct. We don't use Roundup or glyphosate, as it's uh, you know the trade name is uh, uh, is called anywhere in our operations in public works or in parks. Okay, and the other question is, are the, I know there, there are four um, products that they're gonna be using, four chemical products that they will be using, um, and you see these are EPA approved, and, and this I didn't ask you earlier, is this US EPA or California EPA? Uh, this would be the US EPA. US EPA, okay. Um, so, I understand, you know, I understand that the, the um, you know, entirely going organic uh, may be unrealistic at this time. Um, but, you know, you, the US EPA, I mean, I don't place a lot of confidence in, uh, in, their, in their approvals, um, certainly not today's uh, EPA. Um, and I know they do allow the uh, continued use of Roundup, so. That in and of itself doesn't give me a whole lot of comfort. Um, so what I wanted to ask is, um, I know this is a three-year contract, and I think when we discussed it, you said we could, uh, we're not locked into the full three years. Is that right? Well, the contract is for three years, but uh, what we can certainly look at is um, look at it in about a year and see if there are any uh, additional organics uh, that are on the market that could do a good job in terms of uh, treating weed um, and could be considered pre-emergent uh, in terms of the weed control and certainly look at that and evaluate at that point. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that would be my ask is that we, you know, we approve this today, but, um, you know, within a year, um, we, we, you know, staff do a little more analysis because I know, you know, you went out um, and asked and asked these larger bidders um, for an alternate price, but these are firms that, you know, do large projects and, and probably don't use organics uh, as a regular um, part of their business. So 
I wouldn't expect that we would get a, a good response on that. And I think it, it, it would be worth it to look more deeply at some of these products. Um, I looked at them a little bit. I mean, they, they don't look especially uh, problematic, but I mean, uh, what do I know? So I would like staff to look at it a little bit more and come back to us within the first year. And uh, if, if we find that there are ways that we can reduce the use of chemical products um, in, in the city, I would like us to do that. Um, so that would be my ask. I, I, um, I would just ask if any of my colleagues would support that. That would be, you know, I would move to approve the item with the condition that we, we, we see that report back within the year. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I would, I would second that. Okay, uh, Mr. Imrani, thank you. Again, may I have a roll call, please? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Excuse Go me. ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Najari. Uh, but I just, I just want to look at this holistically. As I read the report, if we had gone to organics, it would have required also some manual work. Uh, manual to me means that you're going to have a two-stroke weed eater or some other sort of uh, fossil fuel driven device, which is going to be digging up the weeds okay. or slicing them up. So let's look at the whole whole thing. We want to reduce the impact uh, in its entirety. I think that's the thrust of Mr. Brotman's yeah, discussion. Absolutely. Let's make sure we look at that too. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically this item will come back in a year time, right? But yes, Mr. Gulain. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Member City Council, Public Works uh, and Mr. Imrani staff will do a, a deeper analysis and look at other available alternatives, organic alternatives in a year's time and uh, provide a report back to council. Thank you. Let's give this to the Sustainability Commission on their to-do list, mm. perhaps, unless we want to do it ourselves, but. What? I mean, that's, right that's now. Just, that's just a side comment. That has nothing to do with the motion. Okay. That's side comment. Okay. Roll call, please. I Councilmember Brotman? Yes. Devine? Yes. Kasakian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Mayor Agajanian? Yes. What's next item? Next item, please. Next item is city council and staff comments. I would, like, I would like to invite my colleagues to share any comments that they have. Ms. Mayor? Ms. Uh, Devine. Devine. Um, at first, I have a question. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when can we begin uh, the nominating process for our appointees to the Sustainability Commission? Mr. Mayor, uh, Member City Mr. Council, Council Member Devine, uh, we are currently in the process of putting some guidelines together for Council's consideration when uh, you are going to interview uh, potential applicants for nomination. That should be wrapped up by the end of the month and you can start the, negotiate, uh, the interview process with the potential candidates in December and with the uh, uh, goal of nominating them by council members in January. And it's uh, our, my hope and expectation is that the Sustainability Commission's first meeting will be sometime in February. Great, okay, thank you, Mr. Galani. Um, Galanian. Um, secondly, is the chief, uh, a fire chief uh, yes. available tonight? Yes, yes. She, I um, mean, he is available. Okay, is he going to give us a report on uh, COVID and uh, uh, maybe give our residents some uh, protocols or warnings for the uh, upcoming holiday? Yes, Council Member Devine, actually he had put a short PowerPoint presentation together that he can share with Council. Oh, okay. does he want to do it now or after my comments? No, he after? can do it now. Okay, great. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Sylvia Alonzis, your fire chief. Uh, I did prepare a short presentation uh, with some coronavirus update information uh, for each of you in our viewing public. Uh, I'd like to go through that short presentation and then uh, as council member Devine uh, requested, I, I have uh, maybe some warnings and, and some recommendations for our community to heed as we enter the holiday 
um, months uh, which are upon us now. First of all, the case numbers, as should be no surprise to anybody who watches the news, uh, are not good. We are uh, facing some of the worst numbers that we have seen since the pandemic started. Uh, our cases here in Los Angeles County have doubled over the last two weeks, two weeks, which is a scary number. So I'll run, the, I'll run through these quickly. Worldwide, we are at 54 plus million cases with over 1 million deaths. In the United States, we are at 10 million plus cases with 243,000 plus <clears throat> deaths. In California, we have surpassed the 1 million mark for positive cases with over 18,000 plus deaths. And in Los Angeles County, we are at 32, I'm sorry, 322,287 cases with 6,874 deaths. I'm sorry, uh, Chief. When you collected this data, this information was accurate as of 11-14. 11-14. November 14th, correct. Yes, because now we passed. I yeah, the, seven, the numbers are increased seven, since then. 7,000. Yeah. Uh, in Glendale, we were at 5,234 cases with 186 deaths. This depiction, which I have used several times, comes from the LA County COVID dashboard. Uh, it's available to the viewing public each day and updated uh, fairly regularly. Uh, a number that I have mentioned in my previous 10 or so presentations that I feel is a number that makes me feel comfortable based on our population and the activity throughout our city that makes me, uh, zero is obviously the ultimate number that I would like us to reach, but under 20 is a number that I feel uh, was a good number. We did fairly well between about August 20th and about October 20th. Uh, we were right around that 20, 25 or so number, and as you can tell, we did peak at the end of October and then have continued to have some, uh, some numbers that are scary, uh, and as you can see there towards the end, um, the week of November 10th on through now, we are back in that upward trend north of uh, or above 20. Our death tolls, the seven-day average, um, we have maintained under two for our seven-day average of new, new case deaths. Um, but one thing that I, that I do want to caution is the hospitalizations and the deaths are trailing indicators. So if the numbers that we are seeing, which we are above uh, 2,000 now for several days in a row, uh, are any indicator of what is to come over the next few weeks early on when the large majority of the positive cases were in the elder, elderly community, uh, we were seeing a much quicker death turnaround, somewhere in the, the 10 to 14 days. Uh, my fear now, because we are seeing a younger demographic become uh, positive and we are seeing um, some less severe cases, uh, largely we believe because of the younger demographic, is that that indicator may be trailing a bit farther. So we may be more in the four to five to six week trailing indicator of our hospitalizations catching up and then potentially the deaths catching up. This next depiction is uh, the LA County cases. And as you can tell from about November 1st, we have been in a steady increase of new cases throughout LA County with, as I mentioned, for the past several days, we have been above 2,000 cases each day. The deaths, again, we have hovered, the seven-day average death toll in Los Angeles County has hovered in that 15 to 20 range. This next graph is one that, again, I've used several times. Um, I believe in presentations six, seven, and eight, I was proud that we were, uh, originally we were the highest one on this when I believe presentation one, two, and three, and then we did really well in Glendale and we were back to the bottom uh, of this uh, graph and the 14-day average per capita cases, we are at 19.6 cases, uh, second only to Los Angeles, um, to the city of Los Angeles, which is at 24.3. Uh, we are right there with Burbank at 19.26 cases. 
This next pie chart shows the um, cases in Los Angeles County by age. And as you can see, and it is somewhat hard to tell, I'm sure, online, but uh, the number one uh, age group that has the 34.1% cases is our 50, excuse me, our 30 to 49 year old demographic. Yeah. Second is our 18 to 29 with 24.9, and third, 50 to 64 at 19.1. Now, again, this is cases. The next one is deaths by age. And as you can tell, the large majority, 39, almost 40%, 39.9% of our deaths have been 80 plus year olds. And second uh, to 65 to 79 year olds at 31.4%. Our hospitalizations, I was able to speak with all three of our hospital presidents and CEOs today. And the message that they wanted me to send is that we have seen over the past two weeks a increase in hospitalizations, however, not the increase that uh, some of the county is seeing. Uh, we are seeing, as I mentioned a bit ago, a, a younger demographic uh, becoming infected and um, they feel that we are in a good position, continue to be in a good position at all three hospitals to be able to accept the patients that do need to be hospitalized. And, and there is a feeling, and it's not clinically proven yet, but that the younger demographic and the later time of year has affected the virus. Uh, the severity and the illnesses that we are seeing are just not as severe as they were earlier. However, um, my fear is that the younger demographic and the younger positivity uh, rates will eventually transcend into our, our elderly community and those continue to be the people that are at most risk of severe cases and ultimately potentially death. So in Los Angeles County, our hospital bed availability for re regular medical, surgical, and Telemetry, telemetry beds is 451 beds available, and our ICU bed availability is at 106 beds available. And as I've mentioned before on this graph, we, this is a reverse graph. We want the high number or the high mark is what we want in this one, not the low mark, because the low mark means that we have less available beds. Our mobility uh, continues to trend fairly normal. Uh, transit is still considerably down. Our walking and driving is above baseline. Um, however, we, we do foresee this changing a bit with, with continued um, orders that may come down from the county or the state. Chief Lanzas, could you go back and uh, read the colors? Yes, the, the walking is, uh, we are plus 27% on walking, which is the yellow color, the driving we are plus 7%, which is the red color, and then transit we are still less than 50% transit, uh, which is the purple color. Thank you. Lastly, I, I would just like to remind uh, our viewing public that uh, if we're often asked, you know, who should be tested, and uh, the recommendation from the Department of Public Health and CDC continues to be if you are experiencing fever, coughing, or shortness of breath, and that's or, not and, uh, you should first call your doctor. Um, there's three things the doctor, that, that could come from their phone call to the doctor. Uh, the doctor advises you to come into the hospital or to the doctor's office. The doctor identifies that your symptoms are mild and advises you to home isolate, or you're unable to reach your physician or your doctor immediately and your symptoms become severe, at which point we urge you to go to an urgent care, an emergency room, and or call 911 for help. Um, I would like to remind our viewing public uh, of what I have called the three W's. Um, they are simple to remember, and I believe uh, strongly that if we all fight this together and we all go in with this together, that uh, we can continue to keep our city safe and continue to keep our numbers low. And those three things are the three W's, wear a mask, watch your space, and maintain a six foot separation from all people whom you live with. And that means all people, 
Um, what I'm telling people is you should walk around with the expectation that every person that you come into contact with that you do not live with is positive. And if you do that and you maintain that six foot separation, and lastly, wash your hands and practice good hygiene. Um, I've been asked, um, Council Member Devine uh, and Council Member Brotman asked me um, what I thought the increased numbers are, and my fear is that there are several things that have caused it. Uh, certainly, uh, family mixing at homes, uh, gatherings at homes, both small and large, uh, gatherings and protests, both uh, locally, nationally, and on the world spectrum, I believe, have increased and continued to uh, help spread the virus. And I just think that if we are all careful, if we are all smart, if we all take this seriously, we are certainly not out of the woods. And if anybody thought we were, um, this is the second wave that we have warned about and been warned about. And we must, as we enter the holiday months, and I know families want to get together for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, we must be careful and maintain our space where possible and stay home if you can. If you do not need to be out, stay home. That is the safest place for us all. That's the end of my report. I'm available for questions. Thank you, Chief Lenses. Uh, any question from the Chief? Um, may, uh, I, I have a um, Okay, Ms. Devon. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, Chief, um, I had to relay that uh, I was at the Americana uh, last week, and there were four teenage boys uh, without masks. And I would say that probably 99.9% .9 of the people at the Americana had on masks. These four teens did not. I questioned the security guard, and I said, did you say anything to those boys? And he said, yes, they refuse to wear masks. I said, do you have a mask to give them? Can you give them one? And he said, they refuse to take them. What I take away from what you just told us is that these four boys who refuse to wear masks are in public at the Americana, and if they possibly pick up this virus, they will take it home to their parents, to their grandparents, who could possibly die from this virus. Absolutely, Council Member Devine. So I think the warning, this warning has to go out to parents and again, you saying that it's 35 to what was it, 50, 30 to 59 year olds or something 49. were in the 49. Um, those are the exact uh, parents who are going to be making Thanksgiving dinner more than likely. So they're the ones that have to be very careful about masks and, and spacing, et cetera, not inviting too many people. So I hope our community takes uh, this warning and th these recommendations uh, to heart and uh, and we'll follow them so that our numbers don't don't go up uh, any any higher. Um, thank you for this report, Chief Lonsis and I I, I want to go on with my comments if I may, Mayor. Please go ahead. Uh, Chief Lonsis, I want to congratulate you first of all for being elected to the Los Angeles Fire Chiefs Association Board. Uh, congratulations. You know, I know that the goal is common, regional, and united vision for our fire departments. And it's always good to have uh, one of our leaders at the table. So congratulations and good for you. Thank and I also you. want to bring up uh, the occasion or the, the um, scenario where uh, we received a letter of commendation from Ingrid Braun of the uh, Mono Sheriff's Office. I guess she's a coroner. And she was commending our fire department and our police department for saving her father's life. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Chief? Sure. Um, yes, thank you for bringing this up, Councilmember Devine. Uh, I don't have the specifics in front of me. I wish I did. But uh, several weeks ago, our firefighters and our Glendale police officers responded to the home of uh, the Mono Sheriff's uh, father for a uh, report of him being ill. When they arrived at the home, they found him unconscious near the door. Uh, he had collapsed from what appeared to be on his way home from the grocery store. Our mm -hmm. firefighters uh, quickly 
uh, with the assistance of our police officers, treated him, transported him to a local hospital, and were able to uh, save his life. He is doing well as we speak today. Uh, an important thing that was mentioned in uh, the sheriff's letter was the non-medical treatment that our firefighters uh, performed afterwards. It appeared that when he collapsed, his groceries were strewn across the floor in his home. Uh, our firefighters, after safely sending him to the hospital, uh, were able to pick up all of his belongings, clean up his home. There was some broken uh, items that had spilled on the floor, and they uh, they gathered all those things, picked them up, put the refrigerated items in the refrigerator, and just went above and beyond and exemplified our core values of uh, excellent customer service. And uh, I'm very, very proud of all of those members that were on that incident, and yeah. as well as our police officers. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite a, uh, a a very, very nice letter. Uh, goes to show you the value of uh, welfare checks that we do for people that don't even, you know, that don't live here. We have family here that uh, they need to uh, to t um, kind of keep an eye on, and, and you all do a wonderful job. And I would just want to mention uh, Captain Jeffrey, uh, Jeff Brooks of the fire department and his paramedics and ambulance uh, operators and Glendale Police Departments of uh, Barrelet, Insalaka, and Son who were on the scene and she referred to them as heroes. So thank you very much for that, that kind of service that uh, you know we kind of take for granted, but we, we have to thank you for that. So thank you, Chief, and thank, thank you. you to the police department as well. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. You, Chief okay, my next item uh, has to do with um, uh, the Southern California Climate Adaptation Plan, and I want to ask staff, um, are we uh, in, involved in that? Because I want to encourage staff to explore uh, this uh, climate change, uh, the adaptation plans, because every community is different, and we need to develop a plan to meet and address our city's climate change. So are we involved in that at all? Mr. Gulanian? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Member City Council, uh, Council Member Devine, um, our sustainability officer, David Jones, has actually started drafting our very own uh, climate adaptation plan, and he has been in contact with uh, that agency uh, for reference and, and finding some materials that we can use. Great. So Great. It, should, it should be going to the Sustainability Commission for feedback and recommendation that will come back then to council next year. Okay, great. And Kimberly Clark was the contact that they mentioned yes. at SCAG, so uh, just in case. Sure. Uh, great, that's great news. I'm glad to hear that. Um, lastly, uh, oh, another, um, I attended a panel discussion from uh, done by the uh, Glendale Environmental Coalition on Environmental Justice. It was, it was quite interesting, but I, I just want to point out that uh, two of the, um, uh, the, uh, items that they were focusing on was our transportation connectivity, bike lanes, and I think we've discussed that uh, in the past. We have bike lanes going nowhere, and I think we have to continue to work on connectivity in, in our city on the bike lanes and, of course, on our, our B-Line buses. So I, I hope we will take those uh, uh, their words to heart. Uh, I know um, um, I, I think they are... Uh, uh, important um, uh, issues that we need to, to deal with. Uh, and finally, and uh, I, I'm sorry to have to announce the passing of Marianne Plumley. Uh, she lived uh, in, to be 90 years old. Uh, she lived in Glendale for almost six decades. Uh, she was elected to the Glendale City Council uh, on April 12, 1993. There she is and she served until 1997. Uh, Mary Ann was a very strong and effective supporter of our Glendale Police Foundation. Uh, I was a part of that foundation when she was the treasurer. She served as treasurer for many years. Uh, she was involved in almost all of the foundation police luncheons, and she could often be seen at the door welcoming uh, the guests. She was also a proud member of Glendale Kiwanis and a number of other organizations. Mary Ann served our community proudly. She was quite close to her sons, Donald, who lives in Florida and is a doctor, and David Plumley, who is an attorney in Glendale. Uh, so I would request that, um, yep. 
that we adjourn our meeting tonight in, our, in memory of Marianne Plumley. She will be missed. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other comments or I go I, to next item? Is there any other comment by anybody? Yes. Yes, I think, Mr. I think Kusaka. Kusaka. Thank you, uh, Council Member Najarian. Did you want to go first? I know you have an adjournment request as well. Mr. Kasachian, you go ahead and then we give the floor to Mr. Najarian. Right. Don't worry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to express my deep appreciation to everyone in our greater Glendale community who has shown support for the people of Armenia and Artsakh over the last month and a half and more. Um, you know, it was very incredibly touching and very much appreciated by so many to see that our own Glendale Diablo Los Muertos committee put up an ofrenda, an altar, uh, on the day of Dia de los Muertos on Artsakh Avenue to show support and concern for the war and the terrorist attacks happening in Armenia and Artsakh. Um, Artsakh. Uh, on Sunday, I attended an event that was also a launch of an augmented reality monument on that street. That's a virtual monument dedicated to Artsakh that anyone can view uh, using your smartphone camera. It's something very new. Um, very different, um, but I want to thank uh, Mashinka Hakopian in helping put this together along with all of her collaborators. They had a small gathering for the launch of this. And also Home and Ara chapter organized a walkathon to raise awareness and all of and, and all of these and so many more that are just too many to name, um, each and every single individual and group working towards uh, a lasting peace for that region. Um, that respects the territorial integrity of Armenia and Artsakh. And for that, I think I'm great. I, I like, I speak for myself, but I know I speak for a lot of other people when I say this, that it's been truly heartwarming to see the outpouring of support um, from all parts of the community. However, given our fire chief's comments, we have to ensure that when these gatherings do happen, that, you know, to limit them to really be careful because we do have a pandemic, we're in the midst of a pandemic and we have to take that very seriously. Um, I wanna also congratulate the city clerk's office and the city staff uh, for, and everyone from the city manager's office to GTV6 and helping get the word out about the November general elections. This was one of the first elections that I uh, was not involved in. Um, I, I just got to vote and that was uh, pretty much it, but um, I was very impressed with the amount of outreach that we were able to do. Uh, I'm excited to see the number of voters that participated. I think we, uh, throughout the state and in other places, we hit uh, record voter turnouts. Um, but it did make me nostalgic uh, just a little bit. Um, and I want to thank staff for their hard work. And speaking of our excellent city staff, my next request is one that I'd like to make with a very heavy heart. Um, and. It is with great sadness um, that I ask that we adjourn today's meeting in memory of the former assistant city clerk of the city of Glendale, someone who all of you knew very well, Rita Faye Mosler Buchanan, who was born on August 9th in 1956 in Gadsden, Alabama. She was a fifth child born to the late YZ Mosler and Christine Gary Mosler Streeter. Rita attended elementary school at L.V. Johnson General Forest and Emma Sampson High School, where she was one of the first black cheerleaders, an honor student and a talented piano player. She attended Tennessee State University um, and was a very proud tiger and received her bachelor's of science in accounting. And not many people knew this, but she was at school. Uh, she was in the same school at the same time as Oprah Winfrey. Um, she later went on to receive her master's in business at California State University, Northridge. Uh, and she started her career with the city of West Covina in their city clerk's office and later accepted a promotion, a promotional position with the city of Glendale and became our assistant city clerk. Um, and this is where I came to know Rita. I remember her sharp wit and humor and zest for life. Um, she was one of the most knowledgeable people I had worked with in the city clerk prof profession, someone I relied on tremendously. And she was always honest, proud of her profession, proud of being a public servant and the role that she had in defending our democratic processes, and she loved interacting with the residents and other staff. Um, she retired from the city of Glendale for a brief period, worked at the Pasadena City Clerk's Office, and she came back to help 
the city with our most recent election in March. So many of you got to see her again, and she was a great asset. But last year in January 2019, Rita was faced with the Battle of Cancer. Uh, she was a trooper um, and was determined to beat the odds of surgery and daily appointments of chemo and radiation treatments. Then, just as she thought she was on the road to recovery, she was faced with another setback in July and with another round of surgery and chemo radiation in August 2019. In spite of everything, she was determined to beat all odds and continue with her life. She had a saying that the devil is a liar. Uh, Rita had a strong spirit of giving and helping those whom she cared about no matter what, and you all knew this. She fought a good fight of faith and made her transition on November 6, 2020. She will be missed by everyone in the city of Glendale. I'd like to ask that we adjourn also in her memory this evening. Yes. Uh, that's so sad. I, I knew Rita, and this is so sad anyway. Okay, thank you. Thank you for informing us. Next, yes, Mr. I just uh, have Nijo a Nijo? just have a comment. Is uh, yes, is Chief Pavelitis in the room? Yes, he's here. Well, if he could come up, I'll I'll set the stage. Um, it was uh, it was Friday evening, about five five p.m. when I got a frantic call from the government relations director for Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb uh, has tried to be a, a responsible corporate citizen, as you know, when we discussed our uh, short-term uh, rentals and our prohibition on such. But the gentleman, um, John Choi, uh, called me uh, very, uh, very concerned and very frustrated. They had learned that um, a, a party was being promoted in the Northwest Glendale neighborhood in a single family residence. They had picked this up on the social media and their research. Um, it was being promoted by a rather infamous individual who had last promoted a party in Glendora in which several shots were fired. And I'm not sure if there were any fatalities or not. This was a built as a stripper party. Uh, and there were hundreds of people expected to come to a home um, on Linden Avenue. I won't give the address, but it was Linden Avenue. Uh, and they had tried uh, on their part to pull the plug on it. Uh, and they got nothing but uh, refusal by both the promoter and then by the, uh, the actual person who had rented the home for the festivities. Um, it was then that I turned to uh, Chief Pavelitis. He was in the middle of his um, evening walk and um, they were going to have a separate pickup location uh, a little bit away from the home. So the revelers would uh, go there, catch a shuttle bus, and get dropped off at the home. And uh, Chief, I, I turned it over to you. I haven't followed up with you. I know you were calling out the, if I could use the word troops, maybe that's not correct, but the, the officers. Um, to uh, deal with it. I don't know how it ended, but if you could just tell us all what happened. Well, I guess I can cut to the chase and say that the party didn't occur in Glendale. Uh, we actually sent officers to both the pickup location and to the uh, place where the party was supposed to be, um, and we're in contact with Airbnb. Uh, when we got there, we were told that uh, it sounds like because of our involvement and the city's involvement, uh, that the party had been moved to some undisclosed location. Uh, we obviously had officers continue to monitor through the night there and monitor the rest of the city in case they'd moved it somewhere else in the city uh, with no no party occurring in the city. There are some people that did show up at the uh, pickup location and a shuttle vehicle showed up the, pickle vo the, the uh, pickup location. Um, turns out that uh, vehicle uh, was not currently registered and had not been registered in some time. So uh, I'm sure they were greatly disappointed uh, when the shuttle vehicle ended up on the back of a tow truck uh, heading out. So, as I said, and, and the night for us was, uh, was, was very quiet. We just monitored the, monitored the locations and had no issues. Great. Well, um, thank you, Chief, for your quick response in your department. You always do a great job. But also, let's give thanks to the Airbnb uh, Corporation. Um, 
they they do uh, take their responsibility seriously and they they rang the alarm uh, to let someone in the city know that something is going to occur. So um, thank you to them also. And I guess this is a um, file this under a stripper party um, diverted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have. I did have a request for adjournment, but I'll wait for another meeting for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nigeria. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brotman? Uh, no, I, I have Thank nothing you. today. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next item, please. Next item is community event announcements, three-minute portion. Mayor, I do have uh, two okay. callers on the line. No problem. Now I would like to take any calls from the public as it relates to the community event announcements. We will be taking at least five callers, and let's, let's listen to the first caller. Kathy Morphopoulos. Kathy, you're live. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um... Just want to make sure I'm completely turned off on the other thing. All right. So, um, good evening. My name is Kathy Morphopoulos. Now, 2020 has been such a hard year for America and for Glendale. The U.S. medical authorities that are directing our response to COVID-19 have also issued urgent warnings against today's potent marijuana. If you go to the websites of the Center for Disease Control, and the Surgeon General, you will see the latest research and the warnings. Now, some people think those precautions should be ignored. Their attitude is, this drug is legal, so who cares? I think the responsible attitude should be, the research should be known and that we need to be cautious about today's genetically modified weed. As our Surgeon General warns, the perception of harm has decreased, so people aren't aware of the risk. But the sad truth is the danger has increased due to the unprecedented levels of THC. Now, the cannabis industry denies the research. Just like with the opioid crisis, Purdue Pharma claimed that their OxyContin drug was safe and not addictive. It took years to prove that the promises were false. With Glendale's current ban, we have avoided a lot of the troubles tied to this industry. Now, in 2016, when we voted, California voters believed that the public would pay more to buy weed from permitted dispensaries. That hope has largely failed because the black market has expanded, not contracted. The legal market is supposedly on the edge of collapse, according to the LA Times. The voters also believe that the government could control, tax, and regulate the new industry. But according to the recent government audit and our own governor, this promise has also proven to be false. But it's not entirely our fault. The industry itself has proven itself to not be willing to follow the rules. The false claims, the lack of following the rules has put a burden on every city that has permitted these industries. Why is this issue important? Because the bottom line is the next generation. When you read the list of side effects, you will see the reverse of what teenagers and young adults need. These people need to be able to learn, to be competitive, to be emotionally and mentally stable. What does we deliver? Look at the side effects. It's the reverse. There was also supposed to be a green rush of money, so the cities would have the money to handle all the new problems, but the money has failed to materialize. Only a few will make money from this, what they call addiction for profit business, but it won't be me, it won't be you, and it won't be Glendale. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Joanne Morris, you're live. Joanne? Yes. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Good Mayor, evening. council members, and staff. My name is Joan Morris, and I have lived in Glen Oaks Canyon since 1985. I joined the board of the Glen Oaks Canyon Homeowners Association in 1998, and there met the late Jerry Rankin, also on the board. As many of you know, Jerry was passionately devoted to the canyon, following hillside development, the Shoal Canyon landfill, and Adam Schiff's Rim of the Valley corridor legislation. 
I understood the source of Jerry's motivation when he described the Glen Oaks Canyon of his childhood, pre shoal landfill, a canyon containing caves, a stream, and even a horse stable, an area Jerry and his brother loved to explore. Jerry also talked about the original PROMA, the Joint Powers Agreement, or the JPA, from 1959, which stated the landfill would be, quote, transferred by the county to city solely for park and recreation purposes when the landfill is completed, end quote. This was to happen, quote, 17 years from the effective date of the conditional use permit issued by the city or until such property has served its purpose and is completely filled, whichever first occurs, end quote. According to the original JPA then, the landfill should have become a recreational area in 1978. I bring this up tonight because the Draft Environmental Impact Report, or DEIR, for the proposed biogas project at the landfill states the landfill will reach its fill levels in 2030. However, the DEIR also states the biogas project would continue operation for 20 years or until approximately 2042. The DEIR does not state, nor do we know, the purpose of the landfill after 2030. Because this expansion project is no longer active, will the landfill become the long-promised recreational area? I took a close look at what the aesthetic impact the proposed biogas project would have on the surrounding area. But how can the aesthetic impact be evaluated when we don't know the future purpose of the landfill upon reaching capacity? Would Vista Point, trails, the serenity of the area now open to the public be marred by the presence of the no noisy biogas project which would operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I urge you to please put the biogas project on hold until a closure plan for this landfill has been created and so all future implications are understood as we evaluate this proposed project. Not knowing the future of an area surrounding a project is a California Environmental Quality Act violation. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Mayor, that was the last caller. Okay, thank you. Okay, what's the next item? Next item would be action items. 8A Community Services and Parks regarding placement of a bench with a plaque and planting of a tree at Brand Park in memory of Lauren Ann Munoz, Giohan. A motion authorizing placement of a bench with a plaque and planting of a tree at a Brand Park in memory of Lauren Ann Munoz, Giohan. Gagan. Gagan? Gagan, sorry. Mr. Golanian, yes. please. Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, this item is brought to you in response uh, to a request from Council for a uh, memorial for Ms. G Gagan uh, at the Brand Library. I'm going to turn it over to Onik Bulanikian, our Community Service and Parks Director, for a brief presentation. We will also show a video clip of uh, Adam Schiff's uh, speech at the memorial ceremony. Mr. Bulanikian, in the report, I'm very sorry, in the report at page two, it has been written on page two, eight, eight. Senator Schiff, so it's Congressman Schiff. Congressman. Good afternoon to Lauren's family and friends. I want to thank you for inviting me to join in celebrating Lauren's remarkable life. I first met Lauren when she served as an in Let me stop. Is your microphone on? Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Mayor Agajanian, members of the council, um, as Mr. Golanian uh, mentioned, uh, City Council uh, back in September requested staff to come back with a report uh, and submit a report regarding a placement of a bench and a plaque with a uh, tree uh, planted at Brand Park in memory of Laura Gagan. Um, I would like to basically briefly talk about Laura 
And then I do have uh, a video of Congressman Adam Schiff at uh, Laura's uh, memorial service. And also I have uh, the Gagan family on uh, WebEx uh, to make a, a few comments after my brief presentation. Um, Laura Gagan was born and raised in Glendale. Uh, she frequented Brand Park and enjoyed playing soccer, having picnics with friends and family, enjoying the wading pool and the playground up at Brand Park. She also participated in the city's aquatics program at Crescenta uh, Valley High School. She was also involved in her church choir and Girl Scouts. She attended Mark Keppel Elementary School, and after graduating elementary school, she uh, went to Immaculate Heart and graduated from there in 2006. Um, in 2006, following her graduation, uh, Lauren volunteered at the local office for Congressman Adam Schiff, and uh, she attended Georgetown University where she majored in government and minored in Arabic and Spanish. After earning her college degree, Lauren worked at Georgetown's undergraduate admissions office, assisting undergraduate students in their uh, undergraduate programs. In early 2016, Lauren and her partner decided to take a break from their uh, day jobs and decided to uh, bike, the, uh, bike the world, take a bike trip around the world. So in 2017, they started their trip in South Africa and cycled through 26 countries, including Africa, Europe, and Central Asia. Uh, they biked in all weather uh, terrain, camped outdoors, and basically lived off $15 a day. Uh, they did this for uh, about a year, and uh, during their journey, they met uh, many people and documented the encounters on their blog. And I have uh, noted their blog, Simply Cycling Blog, where uh, they have uh, various a number of pictures uh, with uh, people and families that they have met in all over the world. On uh, July 29th, 2018, Lauren and her partner were cycling in Tajikistan where a car driven by ISIS militants deliberately struck the cyclists, killing both Lauren and her partner. While meeting with Lauren's parents at Brent Park, uh, they had expressed how safe, supportive, and diverse the city of Glendale was, and helping Lauren become the remarkable person that uh, she had become in her adult life. In memory of Lauren, her family would like to plant an eastern redbud tree and install a bench with a plaque in memory of Lauren um, at the playground, upper playground area at Brand Park. Um, we have met with uh, parents and we have uh, staff and uh, the parents have uh, found a location uh, that's in um, your report at the upper uh, uh, playground area. I do have um, a video of Congressman Adam Schiff at the memorial service, if we can play that. And then I do have uh, parents of uh, Laura, Mr. and Mrs. Gagan online uh, would, would like to say a few words after the video. Good afternoon to Lauren's family and friends. I want to thank you for inviting me to join in celebrating Lauren's remarkable life. I first met Lauren when she served as an intern in my district office in 2006. The first intern, in fact, that we had from Immaculate Heart High School. Of course, Lauren excelled in our office, and when she came to study in Washington, D.C., we were delighted to have her intern in our office there as well. My staff and I remember her as a very bright and positive young woman with a thirst for learning and a dedication to helping others. None of us were surprised that she went on to succeed in every endeavor and chose to devote herself to bettering the lives of others. Lauren's biking trip was in keeping with her courageous spirit, her open-heartedness, her belief in the fundamental goodness of human beings at home and around the world. Lauren's life and her story and that of her boyfriend, Jay, have moved and inspired millions around the world that have come to know them posthumously. Some may think that is because of how they died, but that is just not so. <laughs> Tragically, the depravity of terror has claimed countless victims in the last 20 years, most of whom are known only to their family and friends. 
Now, what is how Lauren and Jay lived, which moves us. It is how their example jars us out of a lethargy and complacency about our own lives forces us to, <sighs> to wake up and see the beauty around us, to take a deep breath and take it in, to question what is really important and how we spend the moments of our day. We cannot determine what we'll come across in life. We can decide whether to live with the expectation of good. That is how Lauren lived. And that, that, and that, I believe, is how she would have us live. Life is short. Lauren could not know how tragically short hers would be. None of us can. But she was determined not to waste any of it, not to miss a moment to help others, to know others, to experience others, to share the love of life she had with others from Los Angeles to Washington, from the savannas of Africa to the steppes of Asia. She left us each a different legacy. To me, her example impels us to step out of our routine, to place our hope and trust in others, even when tragedy might chasten us otherwise. To see the beauty around us and in others, to live lives of constant amazement. Thank you. Um, do we have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gagan online? Um, there they are. Yeah. yeah. Bob and I want to thank the City Council for considering our hope to celebrate the life of our daughter, Lauren Ann Munoz Gagan, by offering a gift to the City of Glendale in her memory. We thought of Grand Park immediately as the place to do this, as it played such an important life, a part in her life. Lauren spent many happy hours there over the years, learning many things, developing her relationships with family and friends, and growing up, planting a tree and placing a bench in the child recreational area would be the perfect gift and also the ideal location for it. Because throughout her life, Lauren loved children and children loved her. The eastern redbud tree flowers every spring and will bring joy to others, just as Lauren brought joy to all who knew her. The bench will create a space for people to rest, converse, and enjoy watching the children play. We believe the tree and the bench will bring people together and provide pleasure, comfort, and a place for reflection. We want to thank the members of the Glendale City Council for taking the time to consider our request and the opportunity to make a dream of ours come true, to share Lauren's love with the residents of the city of Glendale and for all who visit Grand Park. Thank you so much. Thank you and my condolences. Is there anything else? Mr. Bolanikian? Mr. Mayor, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, is there any comment? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Brat. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think um, uh, Lauren's parents, the Gagans and, and uh, and uh, Mr. Bolanikian and, and uh, Congressman Schiff have said pretty much what needs to be said. I just wanted to um, 
I wanted to thank, um, first of all, uh, Onig and Coco um, in particular, because um, uh, Lauren's mom um, called me, I guess it was one day a month or two ago, and, you know, she shared the wish that uh, a tree be planted, a memorial be placed in, in Brant Park um, to, to honor Lauren's life. And, and when she called, she was not very uh, hopeful that, you know, this was something that the city would do. And I, in fact, had no idea, um, being new myself, uh, whether this is something uh, that the city would do. Um, I, I immediately, um, I think that day or the next day, I called, I called uh, Mr. Bolinikian and uh, explained the background and he immediately jumped on it um, and uh, with his staff spoke to uh, Lauren's parents and, and got everything worked out in a very short period of time. So I just want to say, you know, thanks. Uh, and I'm very happy um, to, you know, be able to play a part in, in, uh, in making this happen. I know uh, I'm a parent. I think most of us on council here are, and, and it, it's, it's a thing, um, you know, that parents fear the most, losing a child. And, and I know this memorial, you know, doesn't take any of that away, but I'm hoping that, that uh, you know, by, by creating a space uh, for people to come by and maybe they'll be interested in, in learning about who Lauren is and her life and maybe inspired in some way. And, and I think that that um, brings something positive uh, uh, into our world. And, and, I, and I'm hoping that that gives some comfort to Lauren's parents. So um, thank you. And um, I would like to move the item. I think there may be some friends that are calling in, I'm not quite sure, or some other um, of my colleagues that want to comment. Thank you, Mr. Botman. Is there any other comment? Just a brief comment, Mr. Mayor. Mr. I'll Mr. be Majority. brief, I know. There are other comments as well. Uh, my heart goes out to the uh, Gigan family and uh, and everyone that knew Lauren. I am uh, I'm sorry that I didn't have the chance to meet her and cross paths with her. Uh, and I'm very sorry that her life was taken in such a senseless manner. Um, and we'll always remember Lauren when we're up at the park in Brand Park with a tree and the bench bearing her name. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is Mayor, there... we do have a caller on the line. Okay, let's go to the caller. Tommy O'Connor, you're live. Tommy? Hello? Yes, Tammy? Hello? Hello? Yes, you're live. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, members of the City Council, I really am so happy you're considering a memorial plaque bench and tree for our dear Lauren. My name is Tammy O'Connor, and like the Gagan family, we've lived in Glendale for more than 30 years, and we found family and community here through amazing people, namely V and Bob Gagan, who've devoted themselves personally and professionally to taking care of others. We're lucky enough to live within spitting distance of them, and our kids grew up together, and we continue to consider them as our true family. About 26 years ago, V put together a book club of several women, all neighbors, but not necessarily connected. Our firstborns, namely Lauren and my daughter Kendall, and a few other offspring from our book club, created their own book club when they were seven and eight years old. And this was really big neighborhood news as documented on the front page of the Glendale News Press years back. And then when our kids got their noses out of the book, we'd often go to our neighborhood's backyard, Grand Park, I remember Lauren as a little girl, complete with her big visor and her sunscreen shining all over her face, with her trusty backpack, trekking with her little sisters up to the park where kids would simply be kids, multiple rounds on the play equipment and a few games of tag, and a cool down in the cement water pool made for a near perfect time for all of us, even though we had to endure our kids' complaints of the 20 minute walk home underneath the hot summer sun. And years later, when Lauren and Kendall would fly home from their East Coast universities, once again, they'd walk to Brand Park to share the details of the months that had passed between visits. And I remember talking to Adam Schiff at Lauren's Memorial about how we could think of an event that would honor Lauren each and every year. We continued to brainstorm on a few ideas and thought, oh, how about a community bike ride or a special day that would connect to the scholarships set up in Lauren's honor? 
but each idea was more grandiose than the next, and producing just one of them would be a real challenge. And then B mentioned the idea of a bench in Grand Park, and I knew this was the answer. It was simple, just like how Lauren and boyfriend Jay lived. It's enduring, and it connects individuals to community in Lauren's most treasured place of her childhood. And now that I recently became a grandma, post-pandemic, I envision Kendall and her husband and our little guy visiting Grand Park. They'll play a few rounds of tag, they'll jump on the play equipment, and they'll exhaust themselves. But now they'll have a place to recover, and they'll sit on a shaded bench, they'll think of Lauren, and they'll marvel about how something so simple can bring so much joy to so many. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Next caller, please. Mayor, that was uh, the final caller. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Kisaki. Um, I want to thank uh, my colleague and colleagues who brought this issue forward. Um, and I just want to express um, how sorry I am to um, Lauren's parents that we even have to place a bench to remember such a beautiful soul. Um, it is evidenced by the people who've called in and spoken about her um, that she was a bright, shining light. Um, and unfortunately, an act of terror has claimed uh, this innocent life, um, but I'm glad that we're going to memorialize it so we can remind people in our city uh, that we must always fight against hate. Um, we must always try to drive out the darkness. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I'm ready to vote for this when someone seconds it. If no one does, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Okay. Uh, I just uh, feel so sorry for the parents. You know, I thought the rule of nature is, you know, we raise the kid, kids get older, the parents get older, and eventually they get so old that the kids bury their parents, not the parents to bury the kid. This is so sad story. And again, my condolences to the family. Anyway, uh, yes, Ms. Devine. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry I was on mute. I, I just wanna uh, very briefly say that uh, it seems like she was quite a remarkable young woman uh, who had much to give, um, but she became a victim of our world, of our cruel world, and that's too bad. Uh, a great loss to many, I can tell that. Um, I want to comment on her metaphoric farewell. Uh, a ship is safest when it's at port, but that's not what ships are built for. And I thought that was so beautifully written. Um, I'm, I'm happy to approve this uh, to, for a young woman who left quite a legacy. You know, I've been told in the past that some people are in our lives for a season and some are in for a reason. Seems that Lauren was in for a short season, but a huge reason so um happy to approve this thank you thank you i think now uh we have the second or all second thank you roll call please councilman brotman yes divine yes kasakian yes majorian <laughs> yes mayor agajanian yes thank you what's next mr ajumia 8B Information Services Department regarding renewal of Verizon Wireless Agreement 1, resolution dispensing with competitive bidding and authorizing the interim city manager to execute an agreement and or purchase order with Verizon Wireless via a particip participating addendum to the State of Utah NASPL Master Agreement MA152 for wireless data, voice and accessories for a period of one year plus one option year for the amount not to exceed 600000 per year. Yes, Mr. Gulen. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Member City Council. I'm going to turn it over to Jason Bradford, our Chief uh, Information Officer, for a brief presentation of the report and open it up to questions. Mr. Bradford. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, the item for your consideration this evening is a request to renew our contract with Verizon <coughs> Wireless for the next calendar year with one option year. By way of background, uh, the city's used Verizon since 2012 for voice and data services for a variety of city functions. And historically, they've had the best reliability, coverage, 
call quality and speed. Uh, five, ten years ago, the other providers just were not viable options in Glendale. Um, over the years, Glendale has continued to receive the lowest pricing Verizon has had to offer through its current contract. However, uh, things have certainly changed in the last couple of years. Over the last several years, the other major players in the, in the, in the cell phone business, notably T-Mobile and AT&T, have made significant investments to their networks. T-Mobile recently merged with Sprint. They've certainly acquired a, a, a bunch of spectrum. AT&T FirstNet has continued their build out and made significant changes to their uh, network uh, over the past several years. And historically, these providers have been less expensive than Verizon. Therefore, based on the progress that the other wireless providers have made, I'm proposing to extend our agreement for another year with Verizon for an option year. We will continue to get the lowest price Verizon has to offer. However, during the next calendar year, we will evaluate the other providers in a formal RFP process. There's absolutely a potential for cost savings. We just need to ensure we get the uh, same coverage in Glendale. I expect it to be a, a very competitive process, and it'll be very interesting to see how it, how it plays out. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess anybody wants to move the item? I'll move the item. Second. OK. Roll call, please. Councilman Brotman. Yeah. Devine. Yes. Kasakian. Yes. Najarian. Yes. Mayor Abijanya. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Red. OK. What's next, please? Next would be nine hearings on 9 Community Development regarding appeal of design review boards. Uh, denial of DRB case number PDR 1709694-C, 910 Laird Drive, uh, continued from 10-2020. Uh, motion to reverse the design review board's decision and approve the project. Two, motion to sustain the design review board's decision to deny the project. Thank you. I understand that the applicant needs additional time to prepare the information requested by the council. I will open the hearing and would like to ask for a motion to continue the hearing to the January 26, 2021. I mean, we are going to 2021 without further public notice. Okay. Uh, Can you repeat need that? a motion? Uh, as soon as he opens the hearing. I believe, Mr. Mayor, we need to open the he, hearing and then. He did. Uh -huh. So he opened the hearing and, and, and uh, requested a motion to continue to date certain j j January 26th. That's 26. what I read. Yeah. Okay. okay. If that date works, I'll move it. January 26, 2021. I'll second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Brotman? Yes. Devine? Yes. Kasakian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Mayor Agajanian? Yes, thank you. What's next on the agenda? B would be community development regarding appeal of design review board approved of DRB case number PDR 1918581 for 1226 Vista Court. One motion to sustain the design review board decision and approve the project. Two motion reversing the design review board's decision continuing the matter to December 1st, 2020 and directing the city attorneys to prepare findings reversing the design review board's decision and denying the project. And three, motion to remand the project to the Design Review Board for consideration. Okay, I would like to ask for a motion to continue item 9B to December 1, 2020 without further public notice. So I will ask uh, my colleagues to approve this for following Mayor, the Mayor, I just got a, a phone call uh, it says on the line, item 9B, Ronnie Werner. Yes. So, Mr. Mayor, if, if yes, I may, you can take that speaker. I would, I would suggest you, uh, if they want to speak, to limit it to the issue of whether or not to grant the continuance, since the, the matter hasn't been opened yet. Okay, so I can ask my colleagues whether we can... Yeah, but you should I... take that speaker, but they can, okay. only, they can only speak as to whether or not to grant the continuance, not the, okay. not the hear, merits Just of the hearing on... itself. Whether to grant or not to grant, that's what the caller should, you know, concentrate on. Yes, I'm listening. Rondi Werner? Rondi? Yes. Yeah, hello. 
Um, hello, Mayor and City Council and staff. Uh, thank you for um, letting me speak. Um, as you may have heard from all the emails that have been flying around um, between staff and residents, um, none of us were really quite sure of the process of continuing a hearing, but as the appellant wasn't available um, due to being called back to work, um, we just want to make sure that this gets continued to a time when she can. Um, in, in good faith, she let the case planner know immediately that she would be available um, only after December 18th. And um, I noticed on the agenda that December 1, that wouldn't be late enough. Um, by um, delaying it until she gets um, done with her work, you know, she's in the um, motion picture television business, so, you know, her schedule depends on her for film shoots and so on. So it's not as flexible as maybe a lot of people's jobs. But anyway, um, there's another hearing in Adams Hill and that one has a turnaround time that would be consistent with this if it were continued to the December 18th. So it's not like it's an unusual length of time or anything. But uh, hey. and I noticed in the code, there's no specific guarantee of a turnaround time for hearings. So hopefully, that in the important, uh, in the um, interest of having the appellant actually be at her own appeal, it seems reasonable that we should be able to accommodate her work schedule. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. But generally, they can right now. They don't have to come forward. They can connect from anywhere through Zoom or other means by phone calls. So at this time, uh, I would like to entertain the motion that we did uh, postpone this to December 1, 2020. Is there any motion to do that? Then next week maybe, or following week, we will think about something else. But right now, is there a, uh, anybody wants to extend this to Later. December 1st, 2020? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, is it necessary for us to continue it to December 1st now? Could we, maybe maybe the, the interim city manager can tell us if we can just set it on that later date and then we don't have to deal with this again on the 1st. Yes, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Go Member on. City Council, Council Member Broughtman, I think in the interest of uh, both for the appellant and the property owner, the applicant, uh, it would be great for them to know that we set, council sets a, a date certain, so everyone's uh, aware of when it will come back. And, and if I may add, if we if the council doesn't set it on a date certain, the, the, we would have to be re-notice the hearing. Um, right now we can continue, we can bring it back December 1st, and if the council decides on another continuance within your discretion, then you can do that at that meeting. That's what I was saying, because this is, I guess it says December 1st, is on the agenda for December 1st. So it will, the easiest way will be to continue until December 1st. Do I have a motion to continue this to December 1st? I mean, is, is the hold up uh, from my colleagues the fact that we would have to then move it again after the first? Yes, that's will be, we can continue. Uh, uh, Councilman Minajarian, you're muted. Is there no. nobody? Uh, oh, um, Mr. I mean, Nijar. you know, so it's, you, I think we need, we should be as equitable as possible to, Both to all parties concerned and uh, I think we should err on the side of uh, the appellant who is feeling uh, that she's the aggrieved party. December 1st, they would, so the issue is they want it longer than December 1st? She's Correct. not available till December 18th, is that the date I heard? Well, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, City Council, the last meeting of the year is on December 15th. So if the appellant's not available until December 18th, then the next available council meeting will be in January. Or February. And, and if I may, I just in terms of the balancing of the equities, uh, Councilman Ajar and the staff has been trying to balance the, the interests of both the appellant and the applicant. Um, and, and it's our understanding that the applicant is not 
you know, has not been favorable to, con to additional continuances. So that's why it's recommended to come back on the first or at the latest, no, you know, sometime this year. Mayor, your point was well taken that it's, it's a different due to the pandemic. We just need to get in front of a computer screen and maybe take uh, an hour off of our, I, you know, typically these things are maybe an hour long. Um, perhaps we should shoot for the first. Is there a second? I mean, I'll shoot. I can say the first. I, I could second that. I guess I'll second it. But ultimately, um, what do we have um, to lose by waiting, you know, a few more weeks? It's if people have requested, let all the parties be here and available. And if one person is saying that they're not available, let's try to accommodate that. Um, but this is what that technology, but maybe we don't know what the circumstance, I don't know what the circumstances are uh, specifically that make them unavailable for the first. Um, I'm for continuing this. I just want it to be something that everyone can agree on and that neither party is trying to game the process. Yeah. I mean, I'll second uh, Council Member Najarian's motion for the sake of time and, and to move this forward, but um, that's I mean, not to I'm say that... To hear from, the problem is we have the other, we have the applicant saying, no, I'm ready to go and, and let's, let's push forward. So uh, we have to strike some sort of balance in what we think is fair. So I don't know, what do my other colleagues think? Uh, okay, is, if there is uh, no comments, I want to move the item. We have the... Uh, for, I mean, it's we seconded. do have a first and a second, correct? Yeah. Uh, so let's go. Can I? I think Council Member Brotman. Yes, cons, Council Member Brotman. I, I, I'm just, I find this very confusing. So has, has I mean, I know we had a caller, uh, Ms. Warner mentioned that the appellant isn't available till the 18th. We heard that from the appellant? Yeah. Uh, good question. What's, I, I mean, this is, uh, my letter. I received a letter from that. From Mr. The Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor City yes. Council, if we can uh, have uh, Mr. Lanzafame come yes. well Mr. Director. Phil Lanzafame is here. Uh, is there anything you want to add? Uh, just to answer to the question, the appellant did ask for a continuance past the date that she indicated she'd be available, December 18th or 19th. Uh, that would put the next available hearing at January 12th. January 12th. I, mean, I, would, I would just say let's, um, I mean, the appellant is spending, you know, a considerable amount of money to have this appeal. Um, it seems unreasonable to do it at a time that she's not going to be able to attend. I understand that now we're all on Zoom. I don't know the circumstances, so um, I would rather just pick a time that, that is going to work for everybody. Uh, you know, if, if if there needs to be, if we need to say December 1st now, and then there's some conversation with the appellate to see whether she can break away from whatever activity she's involved with, you know, that might work. I don't know. Okay, why we don't move it to December 1st, and then we will discuss it with the appellant, appellant and okay. with the person, the owner of the property, and see what we can do. Yeah, and, and let me just say, before casting my vote, I'm not objecting to moving it to January 12th come um, December uh, 1st or yes. whenever we're back. Now all these dates are <laughs> out there. But I, I will say that, you know, okay, so uh, for those who came expecting to see a double header uh, for um, a public hearing for these appeals, uh, we're going to have to move it. But after that, if we move it to a second time, that's it. Um, we're going to have to move forward with it. Thank you. Time, roll, so. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Member Brotman. Yes. Devine. Yes. Kasakian. Yes. Najarian. Yes. Mayor Abijanian. Yes. What's next, please? Next would be oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Council may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The city manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and report. Mayor, we do not have any callers. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we don't have any callers, so we go to the next item, please. New business? New. Do we have a new business, Mr. We have, Garcia? We have no new business. 
Mr. Mr. Boranian? No, sir. Okay, Mr. Kasaki. Motion, motion to adjourn in memory of uh, Mary Ann Plumley and uh, Rita Buchanan. Second. Thank you. So we uh, adjourn tonight and in their memory at 7.32 p.m. This is a record, by the way. Thank you very much, everybody. And better, Mr. Mayor.